In a world with ghouls, ghosts and Garys, there seems to be no limit to the strange and seemingly paranormal encounters for us to find, but every now and then, you see something that appears to be genuine magic, when in reality, is simply a clever trick. And then we have psychers, real world sorcerers and magicians. But what is a psyker? How are they made? And who out there has the abilities to be considered one? In the most simple and straightforward explanation, a psyker is someone who possesses powers both psychic and paranormal. The most common way of creating a psyker is through the use of the Forced Evolutionary Virus or FEV, but psychic abilities can also be inherited through genetics, developed over long periods of isolation, unlocked through chemical stimulation, and technology. Richard Gray, after falling into a vat of FEV, went on to become the Master, who, after absorbing other humans and connecting himself to the LA Vault computer, gained the ability to attack with his mind, and this ability led to the Master using FEV to create several other psychers with varying capabilities. Wiggum, Lucy, Moore, and Gideon are four surviving humans successfully subjected to the Master's Psyker experiments, each having several FEV injections to the pineal gland, amygdala, and medulla oblongata, resulting in something the Master would call a psionic warrior. Wiggum is an electrokinetic, Lucy a telekinetic, Moore a pyrokinetic, and Gideon a telepathic all of which sound unbelievable and impressive at the same time. However, there is a downside to these injections. Wiggum is depressed, Lucy, Moore and Gideon are clinically insane, with each member fitted with a psychic nullifier to keep both themselves and the other psychers safe, not from only their own abilities, but also the Master's psychic attacks as well. Melchior the Magnificent is a super mutant lurking at the bottom of Mariposa. He was once human, kidnapped by Enclave forces, and forced to excavate the vats of FEV, which infected him and transformed him into a super mutant. But unlike the other mutants, Melchior possesses a fascinating power. By throwing rats into the vats of FEV, they are transformed into hideous creatures. Mole rats, fire geckos, floaters, and even Deathclaws, all of which are ravenous from their metamorphosis, yet they do not attack their creator, either by choice or because Melchior has the ability to communicate with and command them. But I'll let you be the judge of that. We all know Harold in one form or another, exposed to FEV at Mariposa along with Richard Gray, but unlike him, Harold's mutation wasn't as drastic or at least it wasn't to begin with. In time, Harold was able to understand the invasive plant growing atop his head, whose name is apparently Bob, turning our attention to his psychic ability, which is being able to see through the leaves of Bob's children, the other plants that have grown from Bob to create Oasis. These plants act as a giant eye, which Harold can then use to see both Oasis and the wasteland beyond. Apparently, the Nightkin found in Blackrock Cave are psychers. This is because they know things about the Courier's companions that they shouldn't. I have no idea how they are able to do this, only that they are super mutants and potentially FEV has in some way given them psychic powers. For whatever reason, I could not get them to speak. I met the requirements, yet the Nightkin was still hostile. Even after using console commands to make them friendly, they wandered aimlessly and silently. Other videos covering the lore of the area have either had the same problem or showed no signs of the Nightkin actually speaking. So if you have experienced this and happen to remember what it was you did to trigger the event, then please let me know. Sulik is a tribal warrior from the primitive village of the Great Salt Water. His appearance is incredibly unique, with a large bone driven through his nose, which 
according to him, keeps him connected to the spirit of his dead grandfather. Using this bone, which he calls his Grampy Bone, Salik is able to ask for and receive advice, which is more often than not cryptic, but helpful if you can work out what it is he's trying to say. Look for the vision that does not belong. Bloomseer Poplar brings us back to Oasis. She is the Oracle of Oasis and is known among the settlers as a Soothsayer, having used her powers of premonition to actually discover Oasis. The Lone Wanderer can ask Poplar to use her powers to shed some light on their future, which is a really fun way of learning about the side quests that are still out there waiting to be discovered. Chuck from Aditum is a self-confessed fortune teller offering information, conversation, and guidance. The Vault Dweller can ask Chuck to do a tarot reading and receive various fortunes, revealing locations for the Brotherhood, Mariposa, and the Cathedral. Chuck is one of the few who could be considered just a person who knows a lot about the area, having travelled or heard things from other explorers passing through, but there really is nothing for Chuck to gain by lying, and what he does tell us is true, so I'm going to give Chuck the benefit of the doubt. The forecaster is a mixture of both Bloomseer Poplar and Solik, capable of seeing into both the future and past, as well as communicating with his dead parents, which may have been the event that revealed his powers to him. Although his powers does give him terrible migraines, which he manages to deal with by wearing a psychic nullifier. How a child has come into contact with such a thing is a mystery, but with his power, I guess it is possible that he not only knew where to find one, but also how to use one as well. The courier can actually pay the forecaster to use his gift to learn about the people and politics of the Mojave, although much like Salik, the message is cryptic. Local, local. The here and now. Little of interest. Things to buy. False hopes and regrets watered down, washed down in dirty glasses. With regret comes a girl, smiling sad, brown robe, name Veronica. Half here, wraps her and her heart up like a pack. In the pack, a key some say. Forecast, cloudy with a chance of friendship. Ouch! Thinking small only hurts a little, but it's a sharp pain. The antagonizer is another person who appears to have gained her powers after losing their parents. Unlike the forecaster, whose parents died in an unknown manner, her parents were killed by giant ants. Ants that she thought spared her life for no reason, but would later understand that it was her powers that prevented her from sharing the same fate as her parents. After their death, Tanya, that's her real name, became obsessed with comic books and the Antagonizer, a supervillain capable of controlling ants with her mind. For this reason, Tanya saw fit to become the living embodiment of the Antagonizer, using her newfound powers to control a nest of ants and wreak havoc on the town her parents died working for. The Roach King is another example of a human having the ability to manipulate living creatures. Unlike Melchior with his mutated rats, or Tanya with her giant ants, the Roach King sits atop his throne with an impressive five rad roaches at his disposal, arguably the weakest of the creatures, but still impressive nonetheless. Professor Calvert, an expert in cognitive robotics, survived the Great War by extracting his brain and preserving it inside biomedical gel. The advancements in cognitive robotics and broadcast technology gave Calvert the ability to communicate telepathically with other people, including the tribals of Point Lookout, who saw Calvert as a god of sorts and were more than happy to do his bidding for him, which included trying to kill Desmond Lockhart to end a long-term feud and increasing his telepathic powers to achieve total psychic domination over the Maryland area. Lorenzo Cabot, a scientist and archaeologist, was exploring the Rubal Khali, the empty quarter of Arabia in the Middle East, 
when he discovered the remains of a ruined city suspected to be the elusive Ubar, the Atlantis of the Sands. Inside, Lorenzo discovered a strange piece of alien technology, a headpiece that gave him an unnatural long life and telekinetic powers. Upon returning home, his son, Jack Cabot, had him involuntarily institutionalized to keep both himself and his family safe. For centuries, Lorenzo has remained at the Parson State Insane Asylum, the alien crown sitting atop his head, draining his sanity, while his son drains his blood, using the precious fluid to prolong their own lives so they may continue to study their father indefinitely. Hakunin is the shaman and healer from the Arroyo tribe. Years of experimenting with herbs and incense have granted Hakunin with unnatural powers, specifically the ability to send messages to the minds of others in the form of visions. These visions do have a downside, just as the psionic warriors experience depression and insanity, Hakunin's sanity has also slipped, resulting in a very strange way of communicating on both a physical and paranormal level. The spirits of our ancestors guide me to a world of dreams that I may touch thoughts. Our village suffers without the holy Gek. Your hands hold our lives as a father holds his children. Mama Murphy is another one to unlock psychic powers through the use of chemical stimulation. A long history of chem abuse has altered her brain in such a way that she can now make psychic predictions with frightening accuracy. Due to the need for chems in order to use her ability, she is seen as a junkie who merely uses the psychic act as an excuse to feed her addiction. Coupled with her tendency to ramble with seemingly elaborate stories such as killing a deathclaw with a single shot from a pipe pistol, leaves Mama Murphy feeling a little less than reliable. But despite this, her predictions do hold truth. She predicts the death claw you face outside the Museum of Freedom. She knows you were cryogenically frozen. She knows you have to travel to Diamond City to find your son. Along with codes to deactivate a Corsa, a memory to defuse a hostile situation, and many, many others. So, I think it's safe to say that Mama Murphy is the real deal. So, psychers are created through one of many different ways. The most common appears to be through FEV and inherited through genetics. Their powers are few and far between, the master has psychic attacks, Wiggum can manipulate electricity, Moore can do the same but with fire, Lucy and Lorenzo can move things with their minds, Gideon, Calvert and Hakunin can communicate telepathically, Melchior, Tanya and the Roach King can manipulate animals, Harold can see with plants, Salik can speak with the dead, and Poplar, Chuck, Murphy, the Forecaster, and perhaps the Nightkin at Blackrock Cave possess a second sight of sorts. As you can see, there's a variety of powers, all sharing a similar theme. Suffering, torture, loss, and loneliness. But these are just the powers that we know of. What others have we yet to see? Shapeshifting? Time travel? Teleportation? Or perhaps we're better off not knowing. Be sure to show your support by liking the video and subscribing if you haven't already for more Fallout content. If there's anything you would like to see in a later video, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. With that said, thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you in the next adventure.